Hey, Crit Sandwich listeners, if you love our show as much as our moms do, get on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Thanks. Get ready for a hot and spicy Crit Sandwich. Did that at the wrong spot? That was wrong. Oh, <laughs> I did it. It's at the beginning. Chuck usually does that. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Crit Sandwich, the world's tastiest D and D podcast. Crit Sandwich is four friends playing fifth edition D and D with random settings and plots. We use adult language, have inconsistent character voices, and screw up the rules. If this is your first time listening, check out our first three campaigns. This is episode three of campaign four. We are hired guns in the abyss with a plot of Friday the 13th. My name is Casey Sears. I am your host. To the left, our dungeon master, Matt Popich. What's up, man? Across the table from me, Chuck Ventus. Hello. To my right, Robbie Ponder. Hello. <laughs> it, it's perfect. It's been a while. We, we all might be a little bit rusty. I forgot uh, what you guys looked like. It There have been children exploding with vomit, mm-hmm. brewing some of our recording sessions, and then another member of the podcast exploding with vomit, mm-hmm. and it has been just... Wait, were you vomiting, Chuck? No. I, <laughs> okay. I had the flu. Yeah. Uh, so, all kinds yeah, of disease absolutely. and illnesses, and... We are, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to miss a beat. We had a bunch of episodes banked. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. That's why we be- have so many banked episodes too. Now we need to work on getting that bank back. So we are here uh, and uh, I'm going to throw it back to Matt. Uh, can you, can you remind us what we were doing, what we're up to, uh, who we are, <laughs> why sure. we're playing? How to uh, play. <laughs> uh, how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. It's a, I can, let's just start from the beginning. I'm going to read the player's handbook aloud. Okay. Everyone settle in. All right. Yeah, you guys took a mission to head to the abyss. The goal, of course, was to... You had a a leader that was going to help you out named uh, Atlas. Atlas was kind of a prick, but, you know, rightfully so, as he, for the most part, had been seen seen himself as a a world-saving person. However, it was unfortunate when you guys got into the abyss, He, uh, you guys didn't know that you'd be pretty much falling into an ocean, and as that was happening, he was taken... And brought in a spot where you could see to the just on a land bridge near you, immediately into the arms of a huge forty foot tall two headed monstrosity demon, and was ripped the hat in half and then eaten. You guys kind of had two options from there: either run away from that thing and go the opposite direction, or follow it. You made the choice to follow it. So I got to tell you that wasn't what I thought you would do, but whatever. <laughs> Nor do I think is a go. I don't know. Well, we're just gonna hang out there in the because there was there were to go. There were options. Well, our goal was just to follow the the demon, the two headed demon, and get La- Atlas's gear back. Yeah, you're and gonna. So basically, we're going like a Jurassic Park scene where we dig some, through some poop. Okay. So oh, maybe he'll poop it out. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I don't remember that being discussed. So if that was the strategy, then oh, great. Now at least I know what's going on in my mind. Wow. <laughs> Okay, he's looking, well... He's looking for droppings. I guess uh, I was going to say, I guess I'll retcon and tell you, thus far you have not come across any poop uh, on your travel southward. So you guys headed south following the demon. On your way, you were unexpectedly attacked by a kraken when it made Brad Kitty plop himself into the water. You were only able to escape that situation with some handy spell work from your bard, Jackson King, as he turned it into a turtle. And it swam away. So at this point, you traveled further south... And got to, uh, so you're out of range. No one has really seen you, or at least as far as you can tell. But far in the distance, you can see two massive, massive, massive spirals uh, going past the darkened clouds in the sky. Um, uh, One on the west side and one on the east side of the land bridge. And then in between, a palisade, like uh, uh, wooden logs erected to make basically a a fort, a a a small fort type structure. At this point, that's where we're at. Have we seen any trees? Where are they getting all these logs? Great. Actually, maybe once you get across uh, past it, if you do, then maybe you'll know the answer to that. Oh, What do you think right. of that? So you, you said, what, what, what creatures were in front of us again? Can you say that again? Sorry. You did see, far again, pretty far out in the distance, uh, there was a skeletal knight marching back and forth on this side of the palisade. And then on top of it, and again, it's kind of like a big gate. 
Um, and then at the top, uh, marching back and forth, were some skeletons and with uh, like longbows in their in their hands. Brad Kitty, can you assess the threat ahead? Wow. Really? Wow. No. no, no problem. Oh gosh, <laughs> is that it's what Brad a, Kitty sounded it's like? Been a while. I'm so either. sorry. It's been a while. I'm, I should have practiced some character voice before we I, started. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> have you ever wow. seen a cat? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I can. That's it. That's the voice right there. Yeah, I can go ahead and do that. Go, can I go ahead and uh, do my fighter feat that you gave me? And I will con the guy walking back and forth and the skeletons on top of the the bridge. Yeah, the bridge. so there's no sort of um, check on this. As long as you have the time to do it, I let you do it. So, And you do, of course. The guy walking back and forth, he is a very big threat. He is a... You can tell his art, his martial prowess is is pretty extreme. You would call him probably a little bit stronger than one of you by himself. Um, and then the archers seem to be a bit lower level. Um, probably something that you could take down pretty quickly if it was just you. I just want to say that on the, the walk over here, since Brad Kitty has been plunged in, into this ocean water twice, that on our walk here, Brad Kitty has been very unhappy. But uh, Jackson King has been cheering Brad Kitty up, and he's feeling pretty happy right now. And any, any stops that we do on the way here, too. Like, any time we're stopping, I'm just constantly clean, cleaning and getting the salt out of my fur. So you said uh, we're, in an air, we're in a safe area. You're just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, no one has seen you. I, I, I mean, you're safe at as safe as you can feel in the abyss, you know? Like, you, you just were attacked in this in a similar sort of area by a kraken, but... Um, there is no immediate threat that you can see approaching you or anything like that. How long is a uh, short rest? Like we talking like five minutes, fifteen, 15 minutes, fifteen. Yeah, mm-hmm. in this campaign, 15. I would like to take. I believe it takes me fifteen minutes to my, do my detect good and evil, mm. and uh, I would like to convince the group that if there is anything down here that could help us, there is any good at all in this dark, forsaken place. Give me a moment, and I might sense it out with my divine feelings. Is that, uh, while he's doing that, could that count as a short rest for him if I do a song of rest? So, for yeah, because you're singing, so I'm going to let it go, because you're going to be singing the actual healing. Yeah. And while he's doing, while he's that, doing that, does that make sense? Yes. That's okay. what I was wondering. I didn't know if it would... If you weren't singing to him... Then I would say no, because he needs to actually rest as opposed uh-huh. to like meditate or whatever we're going to yeah. say this looks like. Well, that sounds like a really good idea. I, maybe I could sing us a song to help soothe us. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and have you sing the song first. <laughs> really? I'm going to start the 15 minutes right now. Go ahead. Uh, the whole 15 minutes? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that was really exciting. Stop. No. Okay. Fighting off that nasty <laughs> cracking. Meow, meow, meow. And if you feel meow, meow, meow. like I feel, I babe, cannot concentrate. Meow, meow, meow. Come on. Ooh. Meow. Come on. Listen to my song. Oh, yeah. Listen to my song. Didn't there you go. <laughs> Coming. That was good. Uh, for anyone that ha- we have to get Robbie to play a bard. For anyone that hasn't heard him rap, you are <laughs> uh, you are missing out. So that might come up at some point. Um, okay, detect good and evil at an extreme range is what you get if you do this for fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. So um, and I'm looking for good. You are lo- so the spell itself. I'm not sure you get a choice for it's- the duration. You know if there is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey within thirty feet of you, although that's extended. So you just know if they're there, basically. Yeah, and I also know if there's a place or object that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. Wow. So okay. if there's like a, if there is a, some sort of totem or if there's some sort of, I don't know, if Atlas had something that he left behind, maybe. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm just any, anything. Yeah. But it also doesn't go through like, what's, what is it? Stone, metal, lead. So first I need you to roll a wisdom check, please. I can do that. Barely. Actually, no, I can't do that. It's a negative one. 14. Okay. You, sir, start concentrating and you're, how do you, how do you picture Stuart doing this? I imagine I, I take off my helmet and I would, I would 
get down on both my knees and uh, I'm sitting there holding my helmet and my eyes go white and I'm just just deathly still, just absolutely frozen. Okay. Uh, you two would notice, uh, I forget, where's your um, divinity, what did I call it? Divine? What's my oath to? Or? No, 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 your pendant that I gave you. Oh, yeah, the... Amulet of divine divination. Divine divination. So that is going to glow red as you start this, as like you are just assaulted by the sheer amount of pure evil you're, you're completely surrounded by on all sides. Uh, I mean, it's just everywhere. Um, that being said, you are able to absolutely gather some information. First off, there's as much as the evilness is all around you and, and it's chaotic and, it, and it's just everywhere, there is also an extreme source like up. Uh, like very far above you toward toward where that tower the towers are uh remember i mentioned there are two towers that you're that are near the palisade they're there so an extreme amount of evil is all the way up at the top there additionally something kind of strange to you there's something absolutely evil ahead of you in fact it's that that night um but it's lawful it doesn't um so as a, we're in the abyss which is chaos like these these are creatures that believe in no sort of boundaries or or laws or anything um the night is kind of on the other side of evil it is absolutely evil but it is um and, and this tells you the types that's it's, it's an undead um but it believes in law and order which is a little bit strange for here in the abyss mm -hmm. um finally you get two senses of good actually um directly south um you are uh, sense a item of of very goodness um and to the southwest you sense a celestial being a a creature of of pure goodness are we heading south or you are right okay. yes i i relate that to my teammates and i point out that perhaps that skeleton being a lawful being uh could be tricked in some way to help us out uh you know the extreme evil at the top of the tower and an object and a celestial and perhaps i would suggest i don't know the celestial first? Do we want to head that way? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So both involve getting pat. N neither is like a direction where you could go without either a going through the water. You could go see so directly south is where the palisade is, past the two towers. Southwest, I guess you could technically go across the water if you were interested in doing so. Um, if you were trying to get around this palisade that way. Before we go any further, can we do our hit dice for our short I was going to say, uh, with my ability, I'm going to spend four hit die, which means that you guys will get two, either two level one spell slots back or one level two correct. spell slot back. Yep. And as, as also... Do you, as do you, Chuck. And also, uh, with it being a song of rest, since I'm a 15th level bard, you guys also get an additional 1d10 hit points on top of that. I think it's per hit die. I forget. That's it. Yeah, you've got uh, something really good with that. During a short rest, friendly creatures who can hear you perf hear your performance regain additional hit points when they spend hit dice based on your level. Yeah, it says second one d six, and it goes up to thirteenth, which is one d ten. So you, yeah, whatever hit dice you you can use, however many hit dice you want. Chuck chose to use four of his, but you guys can use as many as you want. But and then at the end of those of rolling those hit die, add an extra one d ten. Robbie's making faces. What do you got going on? <laughs> He's over? rolling ones over here. <laughs> I rolled three ones so far, and I've rolled four. That is unfortunate. I'm back. I'm back to max HP. I use ten, and I'm not even to full HP. So, but I'm fine with it. Use 10, 10 of I, your 15. I could have, I can use more to help. Well, I'd yeah. rather you use those to get spell slots back. I use six. I use four. And I got like almost 70 hit points back. I could have healed you, Robbie. I, ro I rolled a bunch. <laughs> of, I got 64. If you count, okay. well, six plus seven, and then I get three con for each one I do. Uh, yeah. Did were you, you adding your, your con? constitution modifier? No. Since I rolled whatever number, and my constitution is one, then I will be pretty much at 104. My HP is at 104 out of 105. Okie dokie. 160 out of 188. Woo! 123 out of 123. All okay. Right. So, yeah, what's the plan? I, this I is guess your guys' time. south along the coast, and if we hit that where that relic is, maybe go there first, but otherwise heads towards that celestial. So we... 
we either have to swim around this. Unless you have any other way of getting across or, the water. Right. Brad Kitty's shaking his head no. Or no, no, no. Uh, I, I am not a kitty now. Back in that water, my choice. Meow. Meow. Or we go straight ahead where we only see one guy. The one uh, and then two archers on the palisade. Do you have any spells that can either sneak us or sneak us? I have invisibility. Like Let me see if I can. I have a cloak of the elven kind. I'm just going to go ahead and say I put my hood up. And then I start crouching down on all four and I just lay down. I have invisibility that I can cast with my uh, DOS loot. If you want to go in swimming, Jackson King, you can easily manipulate Brad Kitty into going in the water. I, mean, I also have levitate as well. We can walk on water. Right? Would that work that way? Sure. I don't see yeah. why not. I guess I should read levitate before I but say that. Can you control your movement when you levitate? I never understand that. Because I, I think with levitate, you just float. And like people can push you around. That's true. I have a ring of telekinesis so I can kind of pull myself around. <laughs> Reach out for something and pull. Yeah, you're right. It's not really a flying spell. It's more of like a... They're just lighter than air, basically. Floating. Yeah. But it doesn't really... I mean, I guess you could try and swim like Willy Wonka style when they go up in the... I could just throw everyone. Yeah. And then... Just but how do they get you? I'm I, digging the idea. Don't I get me wrap wrong. a rope around me, then throw them, and then it pulls me, and then we just spin across. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would like be a crit right there on throwing. Yeah, there's going to be some fun rolls for this shit. <laughs> So you think that um, if we just go straight straight ahead, we could maybe trick this this being up here? It doesn't seem to belong here in this chaotic, evil place. But I'm not quite sure what it would want. What about them archers over there? Could, would we have to trick them as well? Perhaps. I could guarantee that the one walking outside the gate is more of their commander, and those two will... Follow his orders. Stuart, how far is that item you're talking about? Can you know how many feet? Do you know how far it might be? Do I have an idea, Matt? Yeah, you do. Um, the, the item or the... The item. The item... Is it closer than the celestial? No, the celestial is about a mile to the southwest. The um, sword... Well, it's a sword. <laughs> you know it's a sword. It is like <laughs> three miles to the straight south. So you would have to go directly across this palisade and then whatever. But you don't know what's behind it yet because the gate is closed. I saw the shape of a blade about three miles south. And I saw a being about a mile to the southwest. Uh, Brad Kitty's like laying on the ground, like eyeing the guy walking back and forth and the two guards. And, and I, I picture you guys a little bit like to the sides of Brad Kitty. And without moving his eyes of losing focus on this guard walking back and forth, I ask you, no, this sword, you... Was it an item that Atlas carried, or is this another item that has been down here sir, for who knows how long? I doubt it would have been Atlas's. I do not recall him carrying a sword, and I don't know how it could have gotten so far so fast. Brad Kitty turns his head and looks at you. Can you detect any of Atlas's gear? I did not. I, uh, I growl a little bit under my breath, and I focus back onto the guard. <laughs> It wasn't a growl towards you. It was just me Brad Kitty being a little bit disappointed. So, Bard, do you have a plan to sneak us past? Fun <laughs> <laughs> took me aback, too. I know. I was like, what? Bard? Paladin? Um, I say, <laughs> Bard, yes. Um, you're talking to Jackson King here. I say that we just keep on heading down the path. This guy looks pretty stupid. You think there's any brains in that skull of his? No, but I think there's some might behind his blade. Yeah. But there's three of us. I'm sure we can take him if things go south. But would he warn others to our presence? I guess we'll sneak. Sneak as best we can. Or, I mean, is there? A, can, can we, we see a way to sneak around? No, right now the gate's closed. Okay, so we'd have to climb up onto the wall and then try to sneak past in some way. Right. Or, but there's archers looking down. There are. And, the, and it's the width of the, kind of, we're on an isthmus. If, yes, that's exactly what you're on, is an isthmus. With two, yeah, and the, again, two huge towers that go past, the, like, as far, far as you can see above on, on either side. I can it, go and viz and 
scout out a way to. Do you, do you guys not really want to swim? I mean, <laughs> do you want to swim? Uh, Brad Kitty doesn't want to, but I'm saying like you guys can easily talk him into doing something. I mean, Brad Kitty constantly listens to Jack- Jackson King. Stewart is not a swimmer, and he's also just in like heavy plate mail, and okay. it's not good for him. It's not easy for him. I honestly think we're at a disadvantage swimming because there could be other creatures in the water other than that kraken. I know we've got time with the kraken being a turtle right now, but there could be other creatures, and we're just kind of like out in the open. So maybe like an archer or something could still see us out there. So I honestly think we need to just either I go and Viz, try and scope a way for us to sneak around and maybe unlock the gate from inside invisible, or we just approach the gate and we try and see if we can convince this being to open it for us and we just walk on past. Well, I'm happy you two <laughs> are the charisma characters. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that... Brad Kitty has a a bit of a feeling inside of him that he wants to protect the location of the portal. He was made from a wish to protect the princess. And so I feel like that would still be into effect of protecting the princess. So in order to protect the princess, he wants to protect the location of the portal. He would mention something about that to you guys. Like we cannot, we, uh, we cannot, at all means, we cannot give that location away. Well, if you remember, the only thing that's going to make it up there are flying creatures, and the guards have it pretty well protected outside of the portal. I don't think anything's going to make it out. Are you suggesting you're staying behind? I'm confused. No, no, I just mean, if anything were to happen to us, uh, these creatures here, they might question us as, as how we got here. Well, it's been more than 15 minutes, I'm sure. It's the Lady Waterdeep. Oh, Lair or Silverhand? Yes, I'm sure Madam Silverhand might be alerted and reach out to another one of Atlas's brethren. Remind me again what we put on that arrow that we shot through, that we fell into water. Did we put that? Atlas is dead. Send We're help. okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, we are stranded, but okay. Uh, and then like JK. JK. The <laughs> yep. Then you put JK. <laughs> JK. Do you think they know what JK is in like the uh, fantasy no, world? I think we're just, like, I think we're just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yep. So I do feel like that's like uh, above Brad Kitty's uh, ability to, to comprehend things and me warning about the location of the portal. But I just want to like clarify that it is the wish that is bound into the creation of Brad Kitty that is wanting to protect the princess. Gotcha. So I am, am not digging the sense of urgency that I'm feeling at this moment. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make a decision and move on. Yes, you, you are right. We've been standing here, just um, filling out in the abyss. I, don't I am that. deferring to you two as the sneaky motherfuckers to get us closer. Are there any rocks in between here and there? I any will debris? say, yeah, but not big, not like huge boulders or anything. Mm-hmm. But if you were real sneaky, it could could be useful. I am. I am a very sneaky. In fact, when I put my cloak up and I laid down on the ground, you guys uh, probably will accidentally like. If you're walking around, you might accidentally step on top of me. Frodo-esque. So I'm going to say right now you're 300 yards away. Feet. Feet. D&D goes by feet. Or so. Uh, okay, or yeah, so, so we're pretty close. Yeah, but again, they haven't seen you. All right. Well, I say we just head on in. Let's convince this guy to let us through. How about you two sneak ahead and I see if this monster wants to be free, if he is down here by mistake. You get Af- to approach him by yourself? But you two will sneak ahead. And lay low by the walls so you can get a jump on them. When Stuart says this, uh, Brad Kitty looks at Jackson King and he's basically looking for permission to go ahead. Like a nod of the head or anything like that. Let's do it, kitty cat. I start sneaking forward. I'm low crawling on the ground, going as to as many big rocks as I can see, going behind some big rocks, uh, low crawling on the ground. What does your cloak do exactly? While wearing this cloak with this hood up, perception checks made to see you have disadvantage. You have advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide. As your cloak's colors shift to camouflage you, pulling the hood up or down requires an action. Which you already did. Wow. Yeah, that seems really strong. So what are you doing, Jackson King? Uh, I was going to say before he heads off, I'll say "Uh, uh, one moment and I'm going to use my uh, glamour studded leather armor ability to change my outfit. Sparkly purple pants, a silver jacket with a scarf of purple cheetah print. I'll say uh, showtime. 
And then you just see my outfit change and I'll say, let's do this. Anytime that he says Showtime, Brad Kitty knows it's going to be an awesome show and he like starts watching them. All right. And you are, you're just walking up. I'm going right. to sneak. Are you going to, you're, you're trying to sneak as well? Yeah. But you're doing it in like yeah. purple sparkly sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like in like you know. I feel black like you guys leather. don't want to win, but all right, let's go. Like and you're staying leather. back. You're just gonna stay gonna, the 300 yards away. Yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna let them get ahead of me and get okay. close, and then I'm gonna walk up by myself, and I'm going to see if I can talk to this knight. Okay, I here also we go. Like to live dangerously. Do we roll stealth checks? So I wanted you guys to get up there and basically prepare an action. So when shit hits the fan, you guys can get the jump on everyone. Yeah, both of you make stealth checks. Yours is with advantage because of your cloak, Brad Kitty. 28. Strong. 20. Wow. What? I rolled a 19. Woo, baby. I would say that I like kind of moonwalk and it's real quiet. Oh my God. (laughs) It is the best. Through the rock. (laughs) (laughs) I do some sort of like sliding motion just around the rocks and uh, yeah. All right. Let me roll for the archers though. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. They only get plus one. That was an 18 and a 10. Man. All right. Where do you guys want to play yourself? So the closer you get, you see this this night walking back and forth. There seems to... Right, first off, are you near each other or are you kind of like on opposite sides? Out a little bit. Yeah, opposite exactly. Sides. So I'm picturing Stuart's going to walk up the middle and whatever side Jackson King goes on, uh, Brad Kitty's going to go on the opposite side. Okay. So so you guys are on opposite sides of the towers uh, or it, like kind of both of you get to a, each, a tower on each side and start going against it they're massive they're really huge you feel them they're made out of like a rough clay but like jagged like whatever made these was kind of just um making it to make a structure they had zero zero sort of care for if it looked good or not it it was more of just let's let's make this thing and because because we need something awe-inspiringly huge you uh you get close enough to it and you creep along the uh, palisade waiting for the night to turn directions uh when you make your moves and you do so successfully uh to this moment you've gotten all the way to the palisade you're across from each other about 40 feet that's how how far uh far across it is as of now you haven't been seen now there is a uh, now that you're close enough there is like a huge bar on this side of the gate um so in other words it opens outward going to the other side the bar it, so basically it, it seems like some like it's how you would put it if you were guarding if something coming in from the other side does that make sense yes it's on our side the bar is on your side to open like a huge huge metal um thing across the the gate which is two two doors that swing open going out the other side that sounds terrible it's keeping <laughs> something in yeah right so you guys were able to slip in undetected. The knight is walking back and forth. He goes anywhere between 20 to 40 feet from you guys as he goes back and forth. From what you can tell, Stuart, they haven't made any changes. You, you didn't really see your compatriots get all the way up there because they were so quick and deft. Uh, but uh, at this point, you know, it's been enough time. Enough time has elapsed where you feel like they would be where you would want them to be. You haven't seen any motion from the skeletal knights. I assume the plan was for you guys to get up there and ready in action. What are you guys going to do? I'm going to start walking yeah. up there, but I I'll we should probably at, lay this out before things go wrong. I'll look at Brad Kitty. Uh, so I'll go to the right side so we can clarify where we are. So Brad Kitty, go to the left. I'll do some hand signals with Brad Kitty since we've worked together before. So we know like our like, hey, I'm going to take this guy. You take that guy. I'm going to need a sli- slide of hand check. Behind the wall? They, they're looking down if they're going to see motion that they don't recognize. Yeah, I mean, is if you want to keep doing that, I'll do a sleight of hand. Is there a big okay. enough rock for I like that him? you check your stats before you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do a sleight of hand. <laughs> is there a big rock for him to like go behind where he can do yeah, this? Yeah, the closer you get, the more rocks there are over there. I assume they were like leaning against the wall at this point, right? Like, how can the archer see straight up? down? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the knight. So, that, yeah, the archer could... The archers aren't looking straight down, but the knight walking back and forth potentially could if you're terrible at this i'm gonna go ahead and give you advantage on it i'm gonna so so let me i'll roll this 23 yeah i don't even think he can roll that high now you're fine so yeah whatever you're communicating i'm gonna make a hand signal suggesting to brad kitty that we take out the weak the small guys first the archers because i feel like they're weaker i guess and we want to eliminate them so i'll do a hand signal to say like hey i'm gonna take that guy opposite me 
you take the guy opposite of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll hit, I'll hit the target on the so right. Like so I'm on the left side, I'll hit the target yeah. on the right. Yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, so, wow. Uh, and then, and I'm, are I'm you ready in action? Yeah, I'm going to ready in action to uh, use my ring of telekinesis to grab hold of that skeleton and launch him over the fence. Okay, <laughs> once what happens? If things, if things go bad when Stuart goes up and talks to this... Uh, okay, like basically if, if, if combat I get attacked. is entered. If, yeah, if, okay. get, if, if combat starts. Okay. So. Listen, if, if initiative is rolled... Yes. Okay. If you say roll initiative, happens. I'm going okay. like, to launch the shit out of that guy. Okay, and then Brad Kitty, are you ready in action? Yeah, so there's a... I imagine a medium-sized rock. It's a pretty small rock, but Brad Kitty's like uh, really low to the ground. He's, he's awfully small. And I'm like kind of laying behind the rock. And... I go ahead and I, I rub my head on the rock and I scratch the inside of my ear and then I pull out my bow and my arrow and I actually roll over onto my back and hold the bow with my feet and put the arrow in ready to pull it back. Okay. And I, so what movie was that? Uh, I don't know. It sounds like disadvantage What to is me. going on here? You're shooting the bow <laughs> with your feet? <laughs> what do you no. mean really? No, it's... Uh, what movie you ever tried that? to shoot a bow and arrow with your feet? What is going on? I am level <laughs> 15. This Gosh. sounds like something he would do as a cat person. You think? Maybe. Uh. <laughs> Rafi? Uh, why can't I just role play what I'm doing and like okay. have the <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, ladies, okay. ladies and gentlemen, you're he's shooting a bow with his feet. All right, here we go. Not, <laughs> not disadvantage. I would have to stand up if I like want to. I'm not going to shoot my bow gangster style and turn it sideways. I'm, Brad Kitty is a good posture bow shooter. With his feet. Well, with his not feet. with his feet. With his feet, I can, sh- I can have the bow sideways. And that's what I want to do. Okay. All right. I didn't know that was your intention to do it sideways. Now it all makes sense. I apologize. Jackson <laughs> King will kind of uh, see what Brad Kitty is doing and think like maybe he got the signal wrong or something. <laughs> like, what's he doing? All right, Stuart. So I want to say that name in the movie. What is, the, what is the name of that movie where it's like the book of Eli, right? Okay. Where he like kills the cat at the beginning. That's what I'm doing. That's how I'm laying on the ground with my bow. Do you, okay. do you know what I'm talking about? That scene? I it's been will. a long time. But I have seen that movie. It's been a long time. Okay. That movie's like uh, kind of underrated. I enjoyed it a yeah, lot. No, it was good. Yeah. He was blind the whole time. It was crazy. And it was the Bible. Spoiler. The and it was the Gosh, Bible. Matt. <laughs> what? If you haven't, it's been 20 years. If you haven't seen it now. It's been 20 years? Wow. Eh, I just made that up. All right. So let's get back on track. I agree. All right, Stuart. You're, how are you doing this? You just striding forth so badass? Or yeah, what's I, the thing? Well, first, I take that dark black soil and rub it all over my bone armor so it's not so bright and white. And okay. I'm going to... Uh, can I whisper a bardic inspiration to him? How does that work? Does he have he to, has to, to hear you? He's he has to, to hear be loud you. Enough. Yeah. <sighs> Darn it. Yeah, whatever you were you about to do. Show me a nipple from 300 Ooh. feet away. I was Jackson, the I was going to give him bardic JK inspiration to like, sounds like he's going to have to be making some checks here. I would agree. So. Yeah, so I, 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 I make my white bone armor a little bit less white, and I, I place my helmet of comprehend languages back on and pull my cloak of displacement back over myself, and I, I walk forward. Okay, so you were 300 feet away. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> My walking speed is 30 feet. You are 300 feet away. Mm-hmm. At 200, all three, like they, they're, you know, the one, the, the main knight is walking sideways back and forth and the other two are walking sideways up on the palisade right at your 200 foot mark away. All three heads snap in your direction. Just, just unearthly, unearthly fast right at you. All three of them. Am I close enough at this point to see that the door is locked from the other side? 200 feet? I'll say yeah. You have good eyesight. Good enough. Pray tell, creatures. What are you protecting inside your den? So the two up top. So you're still 200 feet away. Are you going to walk any... F- no, I stop when they, when they look at me. Okay. So the two up top don't move. The knight that was down below starts walking toward you. He's going to... I'm not going to roll for initiative yet, but I want to give you the opportunity to do anything. He's going to start going for you until he gets to about 30 feet away. Is he just walking or is he running? Uh, no, he's walking. Okay. Did the two skeletons up on the, I don't know, the walk, walking path above this uh, door, did they take aim? They stopped walking and are looking at Stuart, but they have not done anything else yet. I keep my target on the right side one. So these guys are outside of the gate or they're inside? They're on top. On top, so the guy, the big yeah. guy, jumps down. 
I'm guessing. No, he's been he down. Was, he's already down there. Yeah. He's already down. Okay. As he's walking towards me, yeah. I say, what is a noble creature such as yourself doing in a place of such chaos and darkness? He walks f- toward you. Uh, he had, he pulls out. So now that you see him a little bit more, um, he has a black ebony armor. Uh, it is plate armor. Uh, he carries a sword across his back, which he begins to draw as he gets to about the 40 foot range. I draw uh, my sword as he draws his. And he's got a like a crownish helmet on. You can see nothing inside but two red glowing eyes. But he's covered it head to foot in a metal that you've never seen. And it's just pitch black. He places his sword in the sand. And he says... What are you? I come from above. He kind of like, you you see the fires in his eyes just kind of like, they're kind of like squint a little bit. And he picks up his sword again. And it's not really in an attack position. Um, just kind of making sure he has it with you. And he walks forward uh, some more to, he's getting closer and closer. I see you're protecting something. What is your business and job here? He's going to get within melee range if you're going to let him. He doesn't respond to that at all. Okay. So I guess I, my, I'm i ready in action to... Um, Can you do a, a defensive check on him stance? to see if he's uh, threatening, like insight or something like that? or. He's drawn his sword. He looks pretty threatening Matt to me. Said he his sword's like down. Like it's, it's, down. It's, like, it's not like he's got yeah, my okay. sword. My sword is also in a similar position. I'm almost matching body language. Okay. And trying to be non-threatening. We could free you. We could release you from your burden. If you let me help you. You said we. That's not good. But okay. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> Persuasion? <laughs> First, because of what you are and what he is... I want you to roll an arcana check. Well, wait, wait, wait. Religion. Do a religion check. It's a negative one either way. All right. Four. Damn it. Bardic inspiration. <laughs> you have no idea what this creature is. <laughs> we just now, know that it's undead, though. Yes, undead. you do know it's undead. You would be able mm-hmm. to sense it's undead. Now, you wanted to go ahead and do what? I'm sorry. I didn't know if I could persuade it. I was wanting to roll a persuasion check, but I doubt. That, okay, so that was a religion that I wanted you to make. Now m- make whatever you want to do. Oh, only an 11. That was a plus nine persuasion check. I rolled a three. Wow, plus nine. Yeah. I'm a talker. I see that. People, people I, respect when I just say things. I got an 11. What'd you get? Nine. Okay. All right, I got an 11. Got I got 11. three 11. plus nine. Yeah. 11, 11, 11. Again, sword is, is not really at a point of, like, offense, but he puts out a hand like just straight forward just and, and like all five palms extended uh, it seems like he wants you to touch his hand yeah some wrestling here huh so I mean my hands are gloved so I yeah, don't yeah his are too they're mailed okay so mail to mail I uh, reach out our I reach out my hand so the second you touch First off, unfortunately, I need you to make another roll of... Wisdom save? Wisdom save, yep. Seven. You're going to have to change <laughs> change die. Gosh. Yeah. So you, uh, again, uh, wherever your amulet is, it kind of glows red for a little bit. Okay. You, in your mind's eye, uh, all of a sudden, the second that you touch hands, get a flash of a like beautiful, bright white light. And it is like you are filled with warmth and happiness. And it, you just know that this is a, a, a beautiful thing. You, you feel like you're in heaven. Whatever heaven is to you, you're, you're there for half a second. And as soon as it's there, it's gone. He, he pulls away and he points to the southwest. And uh, he says, bring to me the celestial. He takes a step backward and he he uh, pulls his sword up. It's not no longer like dragging along the ground. It's kind of more of a point, like like just to, at his side. Um, and he he the the helmet just kind of goes up and down slightly, like a nod. I require passage for me and two of my companions. Same thing, um, a little bit of a nod. So I, I does he turn around or anything? Because I start walking towards him. So so far he. He's kind of awaiting for an answer here. Oh, 
He wants he went you get the sense he wants you to bring back to him whatever that thing is to the southwest. There was a, a celestial mm-hmm. being in an item. Yeah, and he pointed to the toward the the, the being. The being. Yeah. We will search it out. And if we do not die here, we will bring him or her back. Um so he pulls out a he he reaches behind his back where he's got some uh, he pulls out some sort of a like wicked black dagger just very jagged and and serrated on all sides and he cuts across his his mailed hand you now see that it's like kind of he pulls off a mail and it's like skeletal there and you're surprised to see blood come out of a of a skeleton hand and he hands you the dagger and puts forth a hand to uh to shake hands with in a similar fashion Sorry, guys, I can't do it. Because <laughs> you're a paladin. I immediately attack. So roll for initiative. <clears throat> Damn it! <laughs> I'm, I'm I'll lie. Uh, I will lie to get my job done. I will not make a blood oath. I was thinking of doing a, some sort of illusion here, but I don't know if I'm in a spot to help you out. So we're on initiative? We are indeed. 16 for Jackson King. Anybody else? Seven. You know, these dies are so good when I'm a DM and trying to fuck you guys up. Brad Kitty got a 13. When you're a player, they suck. <laughs> so bad. You got a what, Brad Kitty? 13. All right. You guys get a surprise round because this, uh, I mean, if nothing else, you duped this guy into thinking you were about to make a deal with him. So he took off his mail and had his hand outstanding. outstanding. So let me let me reset the scene. A, a, so we have half the party over near the palisade, 200 feet away from their uh, third party member who is at this point one-on-one with a black skeletal knight above you are two skeletons with uh, longbows across from them there is the skeletal knight hand outstretched with with uh, which once had a, a gauntlet on it is the gauntlets on the floor he was reaching his hand out and giving you a, a dagger so i would imagine you are going to go ahead and just instead of instead of taking the dagger I go as if I'm reaching it, and then I just, with one hand, and then I just grab my sword and swing it across him instead. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack uh, attack round, I suppose. All right. I got two attacks. I forget. Is Stuart two-handed, or is he it a is sword two-handed. shield? Awesome. Three and a five. Oh. Yeah, don't bother. So, yeah, a 14 and a 12. Yeah, those are both going to miss. All right. So, he deftly sees not really any sort of a trusting type he he kind of sees this coming and backpedals the first swing misses wide and the second uh he parries with his his offhand which had his sword in it go ahead next so this is a surprise round after that is going to be chuck you uh, had was, an action ready yes i was going to use my ring of telekinesis to yep, go for it throw the one guy in the air we're going to make so an this, a, this a creature here it says try to make it a huge or small creature uh make an ability check it says resistant. to make an ability check with your spell casting ability contested by the creature's strength. So does okay. that mean that's my charisma versus like my... Yeah, uh, spell casting ability. That should be on D. My maybe. spell attack? No, you should have a spell casting ability. I got a 10, so I'm almost positive you're going to win no matter what. Spell casting ability. I see. I have a plus five modifier. A plus five plus your proficiency is more than likely Correct. going to pass. Yep. So, so you, you passed. Roll. Okay. <laughs> Again, his head was cocked, uh, looking over at the action. Just then, when the uh, when there when fighting started to break out, um, they were starting to draw their bow and arrow. But then, what happens as you pick him up? I just like uh, pick him up off the ground, and if I'm able to swing him down into the ground, I will to try and crush him. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so it, like on your side or on the other side of the palisade, to where you can't see. On my side. Okay. I want him pulled over. So we are. just magically, Brad Kitty, you, you see on the other side of you all of a sudden, because this is the one directly above you, all of a sudden, uh, the rock that you're hiding behind is just showered in, you're just totally fragged by skeleton, just skeleton sinew and skeleton uh, bone cartilage and everything going all over. It doesn't hurt you or anything, but just, just a, a total explosion of bone everywhere. Right, I don't lose focus at all. All these uh, bone pieces are ricocheting off of me. I don't lose focus on my target. Right, so you are 
what your back is on the ground and you're using your feet <laughs> to shoot the bow and arrow. Why is that so funny? That is just weird. I'm trying to get as low as I possibly can to on the ground. Okay. Uh, and I'll move. I'll since yeah, we're kind you can of use your exposed yeah. here a little bit. I'll move a little bit close, not right up next to this guy, but I'll move close enough where I can see Stuart and I will use, I'll do bardic inspiration on him. I'll say, uh, uh, Stuart, you're stuff of legend. You can take this guy. Give him a bardic inspiration. So what's the range on that? Because you guys are about 200 feet away. Never mind. It has to be within 60 feet. Okay. So I can't do it. Sorry. It's fine. You can so I'll uh, move. inspire uh, Brad Kitty instead. Yeah, I'll look at Brad Kitty and uh, boy, that's quite a technique. But uh, let's see what you've got in them toes there. And give him a bardic inspiration, I guess. To see if he can shoot this uh, skeleton with his toes. Okay. And then uh, are you going 30 feet toward Stuart? Yes. Okay. Uh, is that the farthest you can go, 30? Y yeah. All right. So you're 170 away. I'm keeping track of that. All right. Brad Kitty, you're up. You readied in action. To shoot. Sorry. I wanna, I'm trying to find how many arcane shots I have. Sharpshooter would be pretty badass in this scenario where you could just like shoot from 200 yards away without disadvantage. With your toes. With your toes. I think that's on the sharpshooter feet. It says, mm -hmm. shoot with your toes without disadvantage. It's totally on there. Toes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Does anyone know how many arcane shots I have? Uh, 12 levels of fighter. Sure. sure, I'll be the DM and look up your, your guys' stats. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. I'm sure it's on here. Give me a second. You have two uses of this ability and regain all expended uses of it when you finish a short or a long rest. Dang, I don't use it twice. Yeah, per a short rest. Okay, thank you. I will go ahead and uh, I will release my arrow onto the right side one. Okay. Uh, no. Is, is this a sneak attack since he is not seen? Or it's a surprise? Uh, yeah, it is. Make sure you add that on. Oh, that's a 19 plus 15. So That'll like, hit. Um, it's been so long since I played. You do double attack, right? Long, long bows are D8s. <laughs> Should I say in there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I believe you're right. Oh my goodness. Sorry. And I get a D6 for my sneak attack? Oh, uh, you get two. Two D6? That's, and it's double, I believe, because it's an automatic crit. Is that correct for his D8? It's not a crit. It's a sneak attack. It's a sneak attack. So he gets to do his, his backstab damage or whatever it's called. Sneak attack. Gotcha. Hey, roll two sixes on those. Uh... Yeah, I did. Thank goodness you let me know about that. Okay, so 12 plus 7 plus 15. 12 34. plus 7 plus 15. 34 damage, yep. 34. Yep. Yeah, go ahead and describe your kill on that. It's just a straight headshot, and like this whole skeleton body is there, and then when it hits it in, his, in, in its head, it's just one of those scenes where the head goes flying off, but the body's still there, and then finally the body collapses. If I can use my extra attack to fire arrows at the uh, one that Stuart is fighting, I have two more attacks. Yeah, you can. Uh, now, because you're out of range, unless you have sharpshooter, that will be a disadvantage. I do have sharpshooter. You do? Okay. Nice. Uh, at this point, I have to be serious about this. Are you shooting? Are you standing up now and shooting? With like a <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm no, changing targets. He's still shooting from it with, on his back. I'm so no, because I can't like roll around and I'm like 180. I will stand up and shoot these two. Okay. Imagine like a shoot and then with a feed and then a tumble and then a yeah. pop, pop, pop. No, it's, if you can describe it, it sounds badass. I agree. So the two feats I took is mobile and sharpshooter. And just to, just to clarify, because we haven't played in like three months-ish, two attacks come in its way. My brown die is my first attack. 19 and a crit. 19 misses. Dang. Crit does not. Do That's I get not a new sneak attack on this guy? Or no? You do because... Oh, wait. It's only... No, it's only once per round. Yeah, thank you. Robbie, when you I can hit, still can. use your Bardic Inspiration to try and hit that guy if you want with that 19. If you want to roll a D12, I will say that if Matt will still allow it. My D12 is really sucking. I'm going to borrow one. Oh. <laughs> Just roll it. I mean, it's all Just random. Roll yours. Just roll yours. That's not random. Can, well, is that okay if he does that, Matt? Can he use his Bardic Inspiration that I gave him? Yeah, that's fine. Matt, I'm going to... To use my bardic inspiration on my first shot. Go for it. 25. That is a hit. Okay, so let me get the damage from the first one out of the way. Uh, 20 damage on the first arrow. 20, Jesus. Right? Next arrow will do 7 plus 15 plus 2 on my second shot. 9, 24, and 20. 
24. So that you did 44 damage total. Yeah. So you are on your back. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm, you I'm are my... aiming your bow and arrow and you let loose pop like do a, I'm imagining kind of like a ninja move as far as like you put both your hands backward or like to like by your head, push up, kick up, land on both feet and then loose two arrows, both of which strike the, the knight in, in its back of its shoulders. And it like staggers forward. You know, it, it just got done parrying and, and, and getting rid of an attack from Stuart. And then all of a sudden it just lurches forward with two arrows protruding from its back, kind of like messed up wings, which would be, would be looking sound about right. Yeah, that is perfect. Thank you. So I'm for my movement, I'm going to run. So I'm on the left side, so I'm going to run further to the left and uh, closer to uh, the water. Okay, what's your are you going toward towards Stuart? I'm like moving more sideways for that way. If I have to shoot any more arrows mm -hmm. like uh, Stuart's not going to be in my line of sight. Like if I miss, I'm not going to like try to like make the arrow miss that target and, and hit Stuart. So I'm like trying to get Stuart out of my line of sight. Okay. So instead of having them like this. Uh, how uh, how much further are you moving towards Stuart? I'm keeping track of that. I was still I'm like still the same distance, okay. but I'm moving so you're still to get a different feet angle. Feet okay, sounds good. All right, that was your guys' surprise round, and now it is believe it or not. Sorry, I went out of order because I thought it made most sense to let Casey go first. So now the top of the order is actually Chuck. It's fine with me. I'll continue to move uh, thirty feet. I'll dash. I guess sixty feet. Okay, so now you're 110 feet away. Now, actually, is Robbie, Brad Kitty again. Three more shots. Yep. I'd give you one of my D20s, but you don't want it. Brown, yellow, white is my order. What's your modifier, Robbie? I can help you. For some, for some, for some reason, I forgot, Len, I... 15. Thank you. So that's a 23 for the first one, a 20 for the second one, and then he crit on the third shot. Off Man, hit. will you take 10 damage off that... Get at, heal that guy for 10 HP. Okay. What'd you do wrong? For my hit DC, I was thinking was my damage, but my damage is actually plus 10, not plus 15. I was going to say plus 15 is kind of ridiculous. For damage, I mean. Yeah, so my plus to hit is plus 15. Okay. So you got a 23, a 20, and then you crit on the third one. So Matt said you hit with all three of these. Correct. And don't forget your sneak attack, which is 2d6. <laughs> and there was your damage, so... There's so many numbers. I need to make a hot thing on the computer or something to add all this up. I'm so glad I'm Seven, contributing to this 30. campaign. Mm -hmm. You killed that one guy. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, you did a polymorph. I'm just waiting for my turn. I'm just running the whole time. 57. 57 more damage? Correct. Jeez. From three hits? Three hits. One, one's a crit. Nice. Are there any rocks on the ground? Yes. I kind of just lower them behind a rock. And I uh, stick three more arrows into the ground. Okay. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm just ready to shoot again. Very good. He's already looking like he's sagging just a little bit. As uh, Just more and more arrows protrude out of his back. They're just coming out of nowhere. They're just all over his, his back and maybe one in his calf at this point. They're just everywhere. And again, this armor is like thick and heavy and it, it is still finding purchase as it gets through the armor and, and, and hits what he doesn't want to be hit. All right. He is next. And, and, uh, I'm sorry. Did you move it all? No, I'm staying put. Okay. Staying put. So he is going to raise his arms and his eyes. I'm afraid only Stuart would see this. Uh, his eyes are going to glow red and we are going to go ahead and add a new combatant as a, just all around you, Brad Kitty. um, uh, uh, literally 360 degrees as in a circle around you, five feet out uh, on all sides. Just arms and fingers start reaching out of the ground and pulling themselves upward of, of skeletons, some uh, wearing helmets, some wearing some demonic with, with forearms. I mean, just, just bones suddenly appear all around you. So, uh, those bones show up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make some attack rolls against you. <laughs> How far is Jackson? How far is Jackson King from? He has gone. He's a hundred and ten feet away from Stewart, which makes him ninety feet from you. Twenty-seven and twenty-eight, nineteen, and nineteen against AC. All four hit. Just had to sit still, huh? Up and attacking on the same hit. That's rough. Fourteen damage. Fourteen damage. Seventeen damage. Fifteen damage. 
as these arms and, and just bones come out of the ground and, and just start clawing, they, they all seem to have like chiseled, uh, gnarled fingers that are just, uh, just grabbing at you and trying to, trying to pull you underground. Um, some are coming out completely, some are grabbing your feet, but you just get slashed and, and hit as, as they come out and you did not expect them. At first, the first time you guys hear is Brad Kitty to start to growl. And then all of a sudden you start hearing me hissing over there. Uh, and I'm, and then like you, whatever sound cats make when they get start getting hurt, that's what, that's what I'm doing. Uh, when these things grab me, are you saying that I am grappled? Am Not I gonna- quite yet. Okay. Could happen. You're, you're getting the sense that you're starting to get bogged down. That was actually his bonus action, believe it or not. Jeez. Dang. Uh, he's going to swing the knight himself uh, after his eyes go red like that are going to swing at Casey. Sorry, it's Stuart. Mm-hmm. My armor class is 20. 12. So 23 to hit. Hits. Oh, wait. Actually, he has disadvantage, disadvantage because I have a cloak of displacement. Ooh. okay. Until he hits me once. Okay. And then Good it call. will reset at the beginning of my next turn. Okay. So I'm going to re-roll. So the first one did hit, but this is the, still the first one, but at disadvantage. Oh, 15. Does not hit. All right. Disadvantage again on a second strike. Misses. That's a 16. And on a third one, 16. Woo! Nice. <laughs> so he has has you and what he believes is right in front of them he i mean his moves are deft he, you are not seeing you are you are seeing a true artist at work and when he swings mm-hmm. the sword that being said you you he he believes he is hitting and then you're just not there you're just not there when he hits that one is actually going to end his turn finding finding no hits on on three swings all right uh and you are up sir great all right so i take these opportunities of him swinging and a missing Actually, you know, he's been hit quite a bit, so I'm just going to use my Frost Sword again twice. And we have a 25 and a 22. Both of those. Uh, actually, so you're in melee range? Yeah. yeah. Obviously. 22, he just far... So you you feel like after missing and missing and missing, you have a, a good opening here. And, and just in an unnatural amount of speed, uh, the sword comes down and, and hammers your, your strike aside. Um, he parries that thrust away, but, okay. but expecting some sort of great move, uh, your, your reaction to that is swift and, uh, your next strike finds home. Awesome. All right. So my blue die is my cold damage. My gold die is my radiant damage. Loving it. I do, I do 10 slashing, three cold and seven radiant damage. Where do you want it to hit? You know, I think just a body blow, like just hit, let's hit him on the side, like we hit him with the, you know, swords cross. And then I just swing back over and just hit him right in the side. Uh, so the, the hit lands, uh, and you can tell it, it, you know, does enough impact to deal damage. Um, and, and the area grows slightly blue as, as you see some, some, you know, some of the cold damage. However, the, what, what makes him stagger back is the bright flash of light that hits immediately as you, uh, as, a, as the impact touches and, and, um, you can tell him it definitely did a bit more than, than he was anticipating getting hit for. Nice. And we are going to go to the top of the order. Jackson King, uh, you just, uh, are running forward. Uh, you see locked in combat with a big black knight, your friend Stuart, although behind you, you hear this, the screech of your compatriot, Brad Kitty, uh, and turn back to see about 90 feet away, he is being surrounded by skeletons on all sides. How many skeletons is he surrounded by? Four? No, enough enough to where you can't even see him. I mean, they're, they are everywhere. It, it, it is a, a absolute wall of skeletons. God, Robbie, why are you always causing problems? Brad Kitty, I mean. If we kill, if we kill this guy, the skeletons might go away. But yeah, I know. Brad Kitty can maybe run away from him. So how far away am I from uh, Stuart and the Big bad. 110 feet away. And how far away am I from Brad Kitty? Sorry. 90. 90. Okay, I'm going to at least move 30 feet towards Stuart. I think I think you guys made this fight, I'm not going to say better or worse, but more interesting <laughs> with your strategy yeah. here. Yeah, I'm glad being, we talked to this guy and learned a little bit about, like, something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I don't know. I'm going to move at least 30 feet towards Stuart. Uh, okay. So what does that so put me at? You're 80 feet away now. I'm going to keep moving towards Stuart. I'm going to, uh, 
I'm going to hope that Brad Kitty can get out of this situation. Oh, you know what? No, I changed my mind. I'm going to spin around. I'm going to hold an action and I'm going to uh, tell Brad Kitty to get the fuck out of there. And I'm going to raise my arms in the air uh, and I'm going to hold an action to cast a fireball. Uh, I'm waiting for him to move and I'm going to bring it down on top of all those skeletons. So fireball is like a shoot spell. Like it's going to go toward him. It's not going to like rain or, down unless you're casting meteor, which I, if you have that good for you, that's a good spell. <laughs> I think that's higher level though. I mean, you can hold it at the end of like a your yeah, finger no, or a wand or whatever. Yeah, I'll, hold ready it, for I'll, to shoot. I'll uh, make a little finger gun. Okay. okay. And I'll shoot it. I'll kind of. So when Brad Kitty moves, when Brad Kitty starts to run towards me, Okay. You now, now again, you can't even see him right now. He's completely surrounded. So I, I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying he's gonna have to pull some shit out if, uh, if that's Can the case. Disengage like a good rogue. Yeah, with a bonus as a bonus action. <laughs> I got this. I've already pulled up the rules of disengage on D and D Beyond. I am okay. doing my research right now. Yes. Very nice. Thank you very much. Very very nice. All right. So is that your turn, Chuck? Did you move at all? I moved the thirty feet. Toward Brad Kitty? Towards, no, towards Stuart. Towards Stuart. Okay, yeah. so Which you are now... 120? So, yeah, you're 120 away from Brad Kitty and 80 away from... Which the range on Fireball is 150. Would you look at that? All right, sounds good. So you are 120 from Brad. I'm typing all this out so I don't forget. And now 80 from Stuart. Brad Kitty. So if it's hard to see through all these skeletons, oh, is yeah. there enough room for me to run through them? You would take some major... T- you, the best you can tell, they're they're pretty much. Pre, you would have to make some moves. I mean, they're so thick and grabbing, and just like it, it would be tough. You would have to make some checks. Just do okay. that thing my cat does when I try to pick her up. I was gonna say your cat. What does your cat do? When, what does your cat do when you try to pick her up? Just scream and twist and s- swipe claws at me. I've never picked up our cat ever, <laughs> ever. Just think like some break dance moves, you know. So this is what I'm Roll thinking. Back. I'm thinking that. I will use my bonus action to disengage. I'll use my bonus action to disengage. I'm just going to jump up on top of one and I'm going to jump like shoulder to shoulder, head to head and try to run past all these guys. So kind of like step on top of one, like jump. Yeah. And then I'm going to jump from one to one as I'm stepping across, getting past all these guys. Love it. Uh, Let's go ahead. The first jump. So like that's just almost like a vertical jump. Now, I'm going to say one's kind of halfway getting out of the ground, and you can almost like step up and then go to another one. So give me, this will be a pretty easy one. Give me a bit, just a um, acrobatics check. Okay. I just want to say, too, I have the mobile feet, which is increases my speed by 10, and difficult terrain doesn't cost me any movement. I just want to say that I okay. get that. I do like it that. it does help. Now, that, now it, the, it is difficult terrain. It's Roll not good. That's a two. That's a 12. Okay, so this was just to get on their shoulders. So actually, that'll be okay. You, you, so like one is like just starting to get out of the ground. You use his head to, and, and you like kill him at the same time. You like jump up, <laughs> slam down as hard as you can to get a, a good propulsion. And his head just slams down into the ground and like shatters. Uh, you use that jump up to get on top of another one. Uh, and then give me another roll to, uh, to try and like get across them. Uh, again, acrobatics. Crit. A 20. That's a crit, baby. Yeah. So not only do you do it, but you do it in style. So you do like a, you like leap forward and uh, off on top of one of them, like grabbing one by the shoulders. So like you do a flip and then pull vault jump off of that one and then jump out. Uh, and I'm going to say that it was about 10 feet of movement. They were like 10 feet thick of skeletons and you were on the other side of them with more movement. You still have more movement to go if you want to. So... Since Brad Kitty just critted, and I know Jackson King's watching me, as I jump in the air, I want to try to mimic his moonwalk as best as I can when he was sneaking. Oh, and, God. Yeah. <laughs> you're not sneaking, you're running. I know, but I remember that moonwalk, and I want to look cool like him. So I try to do that. So I, my, I'm 10 feet out of this, you said. So I'm on the 10, 10 feet on the outer edge. Right. I'm about to blow that area to shit. You better <laughs> just run away. Since I'm a kitty cat, I get feline agility. When you move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of your turn. Once you use that trait, you can't use it again until I hold still, basically for a turn for zero feet. So I'm going to move another uh, 40 feet away from these skeletons. So I'm 50 feet away from the skeletons. Okay. And I still have my action. So I'm going to take three more shots at the big guy in front of 
Stuart. Okay. And then uh, I would assume at this point, Fireball is going to trigger. Yes. Okay. When he gets away. Roll will... away, both of you. Well, it's a for you, it's a DC. Oh, that's right. I roll. Save, uh, dexterity save of 18. Yeah, I rolled pretty high. I got a 19 plus zero. I was about to say minus one. Yeah. No, he's not that slow. But I got a 19. Target takes 8d6 fire damage. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is the um, skeleton. Yeah, guys. I was doing the death knight. Uh, so, <laughs> my bad. Sorry. These are the crappy skeletons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in fact, I'll they say... They sound like I'm going to say that, yeah, they, right? they are. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're going to fail. Do I need to roll? It sounds no, like that, so, really yeah, HP. just same thing as before, but in a much bigger... Just, just, just shards of bone spray everywhere. Yeah. Like, it is, it is a... Like you, you did a finger gun, right? I'll I'll point at him. I'll do a little finger gun, and I'll say fireball. And I'll t- <laughs> okay, and yeah, just out of your out of the tip of your finger erupts a massive ball, flame ball that um you know flies right by Brad Kitty as he's escaping. He did a bunch of ninja moves to get out of there, and it is it is just a shower of. I mean, the, the, the force just rocks the, uh, the, the towers and bones fly everywhere. But you, you can actually still visibly see more coming out of the ground and working their way toward Brad Kitty. Uh, but you definitely it, bought him sometime. I wonder because it's uh, Robbie's done the most da- or Brad Kitty's done the most damage. He probably sees me as the biggest threat. Yeah. So for my three shots, Matt, I rolled a 30, a 34 and a 21. Those will all hit, sir. Nice. You just don't miss, do you? 46 damage. That is, with, that is with a sneak attack damage on there. Yes. Okay. Nice two D6. Make sure it's two. Yes, two. Yeah. Just, just mo- I mean, he, the back of him looks like a porcupine. It doesn't seem to be like, he doesn't turn around and, you know, he's, he is locked on focus on Stuart and he is still standing, but it is a tenuous stand. I mean, it's kind of, you know, you can see him weakening and weakening. It is his turn. He is actually at this point going to turn around. I don't like the sound of this at all. I'm panting a little bit. Yeah, but you're you did move forty feet closer, uh, closer toward Jackson King. Okay, but I I don't think you're close to him yet. No, because he you ran toward Stewart again. I ran toward Stewart. Yeah, you did. All right, so he's gonna turn around and out of his eyeballs are is ju- they're just gonna grow and grow in flame, and uh, they are going to shoot just a huge orb of fire at you. I need a DC dexterity throw. Who's who's you? Jackson King? Jackson King. <laughs> okay, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Oh, man. You need to make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw. Dexterity is one of my uh, things I'm proficient at. Yeah, dude. You're yeah, fine. Yeah, you should be. Throw. Yeah. Well, we'll see here. I can oh! Throw a 20. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, that will come in handy. You're about to take 10 D6. What? On a failed? Half. Fire. Well, half. And 10 D6 necrotic. What's crazy? Crossover. So, wait, is this disintegration? But half of, no, this okay. is a hellfire orb. Crossover oh, from Jesus. last campaign, I switched my, my bracer to red. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Gentlemen, that's all of my red die. All 10. Wait. No. Th- oh, it's half. It's half. It, yeah. You're getting all of this twice. Twice? I'm regretting the math involved in this. <laughs> High level campaigns are slow, man. It what? takes time. These He's fights. Gonna, you got to add everything up. Like we're at about a half hour of recording, one and a half hours of recording, and I don't feel like I feel fine, like because we're going to cut so much out. Yeah. So thirty four and thirty four and thirty one is sixty five. Sixty five halved. Thirty two point five. So thirty three. Thirty three damage, sir. Nope, so, that's okay. so the or no, it's not. So the orb uh, like grows in his eyes, like he just his head like snaps backward and looks at you, and it just all of a sudden fire erupts from it. You uh, probably do some sort of dance move. Go ahead. What do you want to do? <laughs> I'll do like some sort of like spin move, like a a ballerina, I okay. guess m- maneuver, right. and just kind of like twirl around. Okay, sachet. Yeah, <laughs> I just made that up. It could be. I don't know. Yeah, so you uh, you're able to uh, dodge out of the way of most of it, but uh, but but still get hit with the the you know kind of extra damage that uh, away from the blast. Uh, and then he's going to turn his focus back to the person across from him and make some strikes. Gosh, these are all bonus actions. We miss on the first one. Nice. Uh, yeah, it is twenty at different disadvantage. I'm rolling. I mean, really, this is a joke. I've I've rolled nothing above a five. Yeah. With, it, with disadvantage. There's a three and a four. The other one was a two and a two. Uh, seven plus 18. 
Yeah. I miss, yeah, again, it just, just he cannot get a beat on you. Where, where, wherever you are, he thinks he's got you dead to rights and, and you're just not there. Uh, I laugh. Uh, 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 uh. Let me show you how to swing a sword. Brad Kitty, uh, some of his shots laid it in this guy's arms to make him swing kind of lazy. So it is actually the skeleton's turn. They are... Wait, I thought they all got blown up. Yeah, but they're, they're coming, coming back. They're kind of... Oh, more co- ...keep coming out of the ground. Uh, however, they're getting close to Brad Kitty. They're going to get to 10 feet away as just like they, they kind of start to swarm and, and coalesce into, into something bigger, but they don't ma- quite make it to Brad Kitty as he moves 40 feet away. Oh, that's uh, not good. It is Stuart's turn. All right, so I'm going to swing my sword twice again, but this time if I hit, I'm going to pop a couple um, Divine Smites. Cool. That's what those are called. Yeah, they are. First one, 20. That is a hit. Although, again, just, you know, again, you think you've got them dead to rights, and then a, like, just with an unearthly, unnatural speed, the the sword just kind of, like, brings itself down and blocks you away. Jeez. 23. That'll hit. All right, and I'm going to smite this guy, which is an additional 2d8 radiant damage. So he just parries the first attack that hits, basically. Uh, any melee attack, the uh, uh, it's a reaction, so he can do it once per turn, at 6 AC against oh, any melee man. attack that would hit. I must I, uh, To do this, the Death Knight must see the attacker. All right, so I'm doing 7 slashing, I'm sorry, 11 slashing, 3 cold, 13 radiant. Describe your kill, sir. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he parries my attack, and then I s- lift my sword up, like, I'd, I'd irresponsibly imagine, high. I'd imagine you, ne- like, you kind of expected the first one to have to, like, so you, you almost, yeah. like, let it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You now know I mean? know his moves. Right, I know exactly, his moves now. Exactly. I'm like, oh, I know what you're doing. Pop, and I just use the, I almost, like, bounce it right off of his sword as it just starts to glow and explodes into light as I, I cut him from his shoulder, his shoulder and shoulder blades straight through his body and like crumpling the plate armor and he just explodes yeah. with light. Just a, like, yeah, I was going to say, just like a tra- like where it goes, like a trail of, of blinding white light goes along with it across him. Yeah. Yeah, the skull falls to the ground and a, as it kind of, the, the red light kind of fades in his eyes where the, in his helmet. As as it goes down, so do the the skeleton horde that are, that is more and more amassing around Brad Kitty, and we are out of combat. You solved your death knight puzzle. We're uh, good to uh, to call it a day here. I mean, do you guys want to regroup a little bit? I guess search. Uh, I want to check out that dagger, and then also just search that death knight to see just if he had anything else of importance, any letters, any notes, anything like that. Yes. Go ahead and give me an investigation roll. Ten. Yeah, not uh, so. As you kind of sift through his armor and stuff, there's nothing left. It's, there's just dust in there, like as far as like where a body would be. The uh, dagger itself, yeah, kind of like again a bl- like b- the same metal that his armor was made of. This seems to be made out of, which is like an ebony. Uh, the, the same stuff seems to be kind of jutting out of the ground every once in a while um, in the trails that you've been walking. So it's a metal that's only here in the in the abyss. But yeah, this seems to be a masterwork of that metal. It's it's like a jagged, jagged, like serrated all around type of dagger. It's a, it's about a foot long for the blade. And then the he also has a sword as well, which is about the size of your sword, so pretty massive. Um, meant to be wielded in two as a two handed sword, and then it it kind of like goes up as a sword and then branches out like a little bit at the very top. Seem seem to be a pretty strong sword from what you could tell. I jam the sword into the ground and place the helmet atop it. It's pretty badass. This pile of dust. Yeah. It reminds uh, Brad Kitty of a litter box. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we'll move forward. You going pee-pee or poo-poo? Whatever, whatever, you know. Whatever cats do. I'll leave it to your imagination. All right. Uh, so you guys meet back up, I would imagine, where? At the gates? Yeah, we head towards the gate. So we didn't get any other information on that dagger, like what kind of dagger. Are you it is. taking it? Uh, I mean, are you taking it? I will not touch such a foul abomination. Do I get the sense that if I touch this dagger, like something's bad, bad's going to happen to me? Or mm, you can roll an arcana check. Yeah, why not? Nine. So with a nine, you can tell that it does have some some magic to it. You can also you can also tell that it would need attunement to properly know what that is. Fuck it. I'll pick it up. I stop him. 
What? Why? Brad Kitty wants to protect you. Don't do it. It's fine. Stuart said it might be evil. Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah, I did say it might be an abomination. Uh, I'm going to take it anyways. I roll to the beat of my own drum. I pick the dagger up. Okay. So again, we said during this campaign, you can attune during a short rest. So if you do, if you want to do so during our next short rest, whenever that is, let me know. Yeah. You guys get to the gates. Go ahead and undo them. Or do you want to take Open. a short rest now? Well, Brad Kitty, how you doing? Is You're the one who took all the hits. I'm 44 at 105, so I'm below half. I took some pretty big hits there. <sighs> I can also throw some hit points in them, too. Yeah. Did you... Yeah, I could... Boy, you look like shit. Maybe we should heal you up. So, short rest, healing spells... What, are you talking to Brad Kitty, or are you just talking... talking, you, are, talking are you talking to, to that Kitty. dust on the ground? Talking to you. Why would I talk, <laughs> why would I talk to the dust on the ground? Because uh, it's... Never mind. I guess we could short rest, too. So... I don't feel like I need to take a short rest, but I would be fine dumping some hit points in to Brad Kitty and walking. Okay. Do you want to do it? Sure. Uh, how many do you need? Like 60-ish. Uh, I, I put my hand onto your shoulder. 61 and exactly. I'll give, you, I'll give you 50 hit points. All right. I'm at 94 I, out of 105. Thank you. I say uh, thank you for, for the cover, et cetera, et cetera. And I just put my hand on your shoulder and you glow with light and where they had scraped you up just... Uh, you feel a little tickle and warmth and then all of your, your slashes and scrapes and uh, even your mind are a bit calmer. In our, in our travels, have you ever laid on hands on Brad Kitty before? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. You get beat up all the time. The Brad Kitty just like, so he kind of pictures it as being pet by you and he, he, he just loves that. Awesome. I imagine you purr. Oh, definitely purr. So the three of you look at each other feeling feeling a little bit better about what you've accomplished you've taken down a kraken you've you've taken down whatever this this lawful evil creature was that was somehow able to raise the dead all around you feeling feeling like and knowing at this point that there is something good in this world this this place of of evil and hatred you begin to approach the gate and knowing that what direction you're heading having a sense of purpose all of a sudden you hear a fast moving object coming from above you. You turn and look up to the sky as suddenly the clouds part and they move move in all directions. The object soaring at like a meteor slams into the ground where the Death Knight's body was. It stands up, turns to you, and with a two headed monstrous roar that makes your bones shiver. He looks down at you and starts stomping in your direction. And that's where we're going to end it. Thanks for seeking your teeth into Crit Sandwich. Please give us a review on iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or email us at critsandwichpodcast at gmail.com. I just want to say... That this guy just stepped in my poop. All right. <laughs> <laughs>